Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we're the IB English Guys. Today we want to talk about a critical paper two skill, and that's called dropping the anchor. That's right, Mr. Giles. Dropping the anchor. We need to think about our literary works when we're writing paper two responses. We can't just be sailing aimlessly and speaking in generalities about the text. We need to drop the anchor into specific moments, look at precise details, and really show our precise knowledge of the text. Yeah, we think this will help you very much because this is exactly what Criterion A is asking you to do, is show that rich understanding. And if you're rooted in the text in those critical moments, that'll help. We've chosen two literary works that we love to give you some examples of how we do that. So the first step in doing this is we identify some hot spots. Those hot spots in the novel that really speak to us that we think are critical moments in the text. That's right, Mr. Jaws. You want to think about the critical moments. It could be the inciting incident. It could be certain conflicts. Maybe it's the climax. Maybe it's the resolution. But we believe regardless of which question you get, you're probably going to be writing about the same four or five, maybe six hot spots. So we want to make sure we know those hot spots very, very well. Yeah, and these are ones we can study. So for The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy, a post-colonial Indian novel, we, we think about Sophie Mole's funeral, this powerful moment when, when the funeral, and that, that's in, in the opening of the text. We think about a moment of sexual assault that occurred in a movie theater, how that affected Esta. There's a moment when two characters fall in love and they see each other uh, romantically for the first time. We see a character who dies alone in a grimy room that's so powerful and tragic. There's a moment in a police station where a man is beaten and it's really tragic and it really highlights the, the caste system and the unfairness. And lastly, we see the romance between Alma and Velutha as they come together romantically. You know, Mr. Jaws, when I think about that novel, the key themes, the key ideas expressed in the novel are definitely found in those hot spots. Similarly, with Sing Unburied Sing, uh, we think about Jojo's birthday party at the beginning and how his mother really lets him down. We think about the police stop where systemic racism is on full display and we see Jojo being oppressed by his, because of his skin color. We see Leone's dream where she is thinking about her inadequacy as a mother wishing she could do better. We see Michael's fight with Big Joseph uh, and where his father is really having a, a heated argument, a physical battle because of his interracial marriage and relationship. We see Richie's backstory, the torture that he endured in Parchman Prison. Uh, again, the systemic racism on full display. And of course, at the end of the novel, we see Kayla singing to the ghosts in the tree, and she's thinking about possibly ending systemic racism as we move forward into the next generation. Really important hotspots. All the key themes are located in those spots. So we'd encourage you to do the exact same thing with your literary text. And I love just listening to you just talk about those in a very succinct way. That's quite powerful. The next thing we want to do after we've selected those moments, we're not done, because now we need to go fishing. Another metaphor what does that mean? Well, Mr. Jaws, we've dropped the anchor into those hotspots. Now we need to go fishing for key phrases, key terms, authorial choices that we think will really highlight those key themes. We have to talk about both content and form. So now we've got the content areas. We have to go fishing for those key elements of form. Yeah, that's right, because these are the authorial choices. And this, these are, this is where we actually go to the novel and we reread those sections. We're not just going from memory. And we did this just a few minutes Indeed. ago, thought about that. So with the God of Small Things, this moment of Amu's death, she dies alone in a very grimy room. She's been kind of cast aside and, and ostracized as a divorced woman, and she's, she's now dying this lonely death. So we remember these moments where she, she has, you know, the, the, where it's almost like her, her, this fluid-filled sac is like her lungs because she's dying of tuberculosis. We think about the crematorium and the furnace. We think about the clay jar and the ID tag. All of these things. So within that, we're identifying the setting. We're thinking about the internal and external conflicts that's there. We're thinking about the use of simile and personification and figurative language, as well as that rich characterization. Um, all of those things are what Arundhati Roy does in that moment. Wow, Mr. Josh, you're definitely ready to talk about both the content and the form in a comparative way. Similarly, in Sing Unburied Sing, we have the hot spot. We're going to drop the anchor into the police stop. Uh, and when I think about the, the phrases that I want to pull in for Criterion A, I'm thinking about the Grigri bag. I'm thinking about the gun, the handcuffs, the dialogue where the dehumanization takes place, where the officer tells him to sit down. And that reference, the, the officer calls him boy, asking him what he has in his pocket. It's really awful, Mr. Giles, some of the, the references that are being used there. Uh, with respect to the authorial choices, again, we'll be thinking about setting. We'll be thinking about that first person point of view because JoJo is the narrator of this particular chapter. 
We'll think about the gun as a symbol. We're thinking about tension, dialogue. So we're taking these phrases and pinning them to authorial choices. We're building A and B simultaneously, Mr. Giles. Yeah, now we can see how we can really take that moment and, and write about it and talk about it. So now we're going to, after we've done that, now we want to give you some examples of what this looks like in a piece of writing. So here we have a paragraph identifying that moment that we talked about where Amu has been, has been cast aside because she's breaking the love laws. You can see that in the topic sentences, which really shows the harsh consequences faced by those who challenge the big God in post-colonial Indian society. That's right, Mr. Jaws. That'll be the comparative point the student's working with. Now, we see the student dropping the anchor into that ping phrase after her failed relationship with Belutha. So we know the student is precisely and specifically going to that moment. That's where they pick up the grimy room. They pick up the hacking cough uh, and they talk about the fluid filled sack under the eye. They're using the references that they went fishing for. Do they pin them, Mr. Giles? Yeah, they do, because they talk about the visual imagery. They're talking about the setting of that room and how that really and even the symbolism of the fluid filled sack and that connection to how she's treated and even how she's marked as a vestia or a prostitute. So all these kind of moments come out in this piece of writing. Yeah, similarly, in the second half of the paragraph, we see the second moment they're dropping the anchor into after her death. There's the moment. Now we're going to pull. We're going fishing for the references, the clay jar, the number tag, fed to the beast. We see the personification. We see the metaphor, uh, the external conflict. Really nice job there. Now, yeah. Mr. Giles, that's paragraph one. Now we have to do the comparative side. Yeah, paragraph number two. Now we're going to look at Sing and Buried Sing, our second novel. And now we're thinking also about this idea of external conflict, but also this idea of the institution and how that's, that's really demonstrated in the topic sense. Here we see dropping the anchor. In chapter eight, as Jojo, Leone, Kayla are return home from Parchman Prison, they're stopped by the police. There's your moment. Yeah, there's the moment. Of course, the student brings in the Grigri bag because that's what they studied from the table that we made earlier. And of course, they pinned the Grigri bag to the authorial choice of symbol. Uh, and Mr. Joss, here's where the comparative comes in. They're saying the handcuffs, much like Amu's grimy room, symbolizes the restriction against those who challenge social institutions. That sounds like a comparison of rich ideas, Mr. Giles. Yeah, it really does. And I think that's exactly what this, the, you know, this writer is trying to do. They're trying to demonstrate these two, like, uh, two uh, different moments, but making those connections and what they're, what they're all about. I think having those comparative phrases in the writing in this second paragraph is really critical when we write the paper, too. Yeah, definitely. So, folks, in the end, we hope that going fishing and looking for hot spots and dropping the anchor helps you. We recommend you do the same thing for your paper, two text. Find those four, six, eight critical moments find those phrases, find those authorial choices, and be ready to write in a comparative way. Thanks for watching. Stay with the channel and see you next time. Thanks, Klaus.